In this video, I will show you how to get started with LASX Navigator and also how to do a tile scan. As you can see, I've already set up my GFP channel in the traditional interface, but you can also set up your imaging settings in Navigator. To launch Navigator, go to the top left corner of your screen and click on the grid icon. When I go live in Navigator, I will see the exact same image that I saw in my traditional interface. When I scroll out, I zoom out and I can zoom all the way out as far as I want and this large rectangle is actually the travel range of your motorized stage. Now if I zoom back in and I double click anywhere on the stage, the stage will move there and take an image wherever I clicked. If you would like a full introduction to Navigator and what all of these buttons do, please refer to our other video on this series called LASX Navigator User Interface which goes into much more detail. So as I mentioned, I already set up the GFP channel in the traditional interface. In Navigator, you can do the same thing by going to the beam path and setting up your channel as you would normally and adding channels as you would normally. The additional tool in Navigator is this channel button up at the top, which allows you to adjust things like your auto range, as well as your exposure time and your intensity. The intensity in this window is referring to the fluorescence intensity manager or the FIM, um, and that is under the illumination window. If you have a Spectra X, like I do on this system, this is a multi-line LED and you can control each of the intensities here under the beam path window. So under this window here, I can also adjust gamma. Now I would really advise you not to adjust gamma as that would affect your intensity in a non-linear way. So please don't accidentally change it here. So I'm currently on the side of this kidney and the thing I usually try to do when I'm looking at sections like this is I go somewhere in the middle and then I hit the spiral button. The spiral button will start a spiral scan which on this system is relatively quick because my, both my stage and my camera are triggered. So this lets us image the whole kidney with a 10x objective in a matter of seconds. Your system may vary. So now that I have the entire kidney section previewed, let's get started with the tile scanning. We have a variety of tools to draw different shapes down at the bottom here. For instance, maybe I only want to acquire a small section of the cortex, and so I use my rectangle tool to draw a little rectangle up here. The other thing I can do is use the magic wand tool, which if I have nice contrast in my sample, I can go ahead and zoom in a little bit. I like to make sure that I select a region that has some content. And then you can see that it did a nice job of picking up the outline of the kidney section. All of my regions of interest are placed in the task list down at the bottom right here. If I want to edit either of these, I can just click on the item and make it bigger, or I can even rotate it, etc. So Navigator is very smart. So if I decide to switch objectives, let's say to the 20x, it will automatically recalculate the number of tiles required to cover a specific area. It will also give me a preview of how long the experiment will take. So if we're in this example, it will take 39 seconds. When I switch objectives, I of course need to adjust my imaging parameters and focus. So let's go ahead and maybe do the smaller region here. Let's double click to this area. Zoom in, and let's go live. So after I've adjusted my focus and my exposure, and I'm happy with my image, I can go ahead and click Start. I have finished my scan, and because I have clicked Merge Images during acquisition, it merges it immediately after I've acquired the images, and I've also asked it to keep the raw data. So now let's go over to our mosaic merge window to look at our project. So this is our tile scan. This is the raw data and this is the merge data. So just to double check the stitching, I always like to go in to look at the boundary and then toggle back and forth between the raw and the stitched and see that um, the stitching did a really excellent job at merging the area seamlessly. You can't tell at all uh, where that boundary was. If you would like to stitch these things manually, you can always go back to your raw data and choose a different method of stitching. So you have an option of choosing between none, smooth, and statistical. 
For experiments that are highly quantitative, I would always choose none and then click merge. And then you can actually try all three and see which one works best for you. If you have issues with overlap, you can come back to acquisition and change the tile overlap. Most of the time people need to increase the overlap. On a high precision stage like this, we know the coordinates and the stitching is not going to be very far off. So this tile overlap is really just a safety mechanism to make sure that the stitching goes well. However, sometimes if you have a less precise stage, let's say you're working on our motorized stage, or if you, your sample is particularly difficult, you may need to increase this overlap to 20% or so. Sometimes if you have highly repetitive elements that are very small and difficult for the software to match up, you may actually need to decrease the overlap so that the number of items that you're comparing do not uh, confuse the algorithm. So that concludes our getting started in LASX Navigator tutorial. If you want to learn more about different Navigator applications such as Mark and Find, Multi-Well Assays, and Focus Strategies, please check for more videos in this channel.